Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. I've got the paints out. I'm just grabbing some yellow ochre. Some yellow ochre and some white. A little bit of red. So we've got cadmium red, yellow ochre and white. Make this kind of peachy colour. And uh, start putting in the light that's down here. Got a nice light area. All the way along there. It was one of those cold mornings, really cold. And the lighting was just right for me to think, hmm, that'll make a good painting. <laughs> just at that time with the light just, just looked perfect for a nice, a, a different looking sky, different to the general blue skies. Had a warmth to it, something like that. Just wash my brush. And then using a little bit of blue and white. A really nice light blue. Really nice light blue, and we'll put that at the top. Coming down to here. Sky, nice bluey white all the way along, and I can uh, bring it to meet up with that yellow as well. There, that's okay. And if you're painting on grey like I am, and you want the paint to be uh, more opaque, you just need to add more paint to your brush. So if you paint quite thinly, if, you, if you're if thinning your acrylics with water, you find you, you end up using more of a watercolour than uh, a thick paint. It all depends on what you want really, and what effect you want. Do it either way. Now I've got a little bit of a cloud that sort of comes into this bit. So I want a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, a bit of red, tiny bit of black in it. I think it needs more blue in it actually. Let's see. Yeah, that's more like it. That blue made the be the better colour. There we go. It's funny when it just turns perfect. <laughs> perfect. And we've got this colour. Gets a bit lighter there. More red in it. Okay. 
Okay. And some over here as well. And then I might use my other brush. Get a little bit of the uh, yellow ochre here and a little bit of the white. I'll just brighten this area here a little bit. Bit thicker paint. It just brightens that bit up a little bit. <laughs> now I can start using this same cloud colour to uh, put in some of the background trees and things just using this colour. Maybe a touch more red in it around this area. All the way along the horizon. Some areas are a little bit lighter than others from the light breaking through. I just use my finger just to smudge that a little bit. Same along here as well. Okay, now I can uh, start putting in a bit more detail around this area. There's a uh, kind of a bluey, bluey red. Let's see what we can come up with. I'm not using any more colours, I'm only going to use what I've got here. Because <laughs> when you're out painting and you're doing a bit of plain air painting, you want a minimalistic palette really. You don't want to have too many paints. So I kind of train myself in that way. So there's a bit of a blue hill there. This is a nice uh, shadow colour which you can use. Um, and now there's, I need to put in a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow ochre. Using that colour, I've got a tree here. And that's got a bit of green colour. A yellow ochre in it. That bluey brownie colour can go down here as well. Let's mix that up a little bit. And 
Yeah, we've got some snowy bits. So what I want is to stick with this colour, this uh, sky colour. Just spray my paint so they don't dry out. Stick with this sky colour, a little bit more white in it. And we've got a lot of uh, shape to create now. We've got some shape along here. Got a shape going along there. Some smudge in, in areas, in areas where I don't want it as bright, I just smudge the colour a little bit. And then the areas that I do want it to be bright, I can pick up more colour and get that control. So that's what you want is you want to con control your colours and your lights to the way you want it to look. And this sort of goes along here. It's a bit flatter there. Something like that. Now I can go into this like a greeny, kind of greeny blue and greeny white. A bit more blue in it. Look at these other colours. A bit more of a shine along there. Okay, I get, it seems to get a bit warmer along here, so I'll put a little bit of yellow ochre in it. And still, we got the, uh, the light. A bit more sort of blues in it. The yellow ochre greeny colour there. Oh, it's looking quite nice, isn't it? All these different colours. It really does make a difference when you're using colour and uh, Really trying to capture the colours that you see in your painting. I mean, that is what it's all about, isn't it? Really, <laughs> it's all about doing that. And then what we've got as well, we've got a big shadow, shadow coming down here. Stretching like that. Probably needs to be a bit darker, the shadow.
Anyway, this will all start to take shape when uh, we start putting in some of the trees, which is what I'm going to start doing now, actually. There is a tree that lives right there. load my brush on the liner brush and then uh, go for it wiggling out all these different branches Just do a little bit of a thing here and there, just to uh, give the indication of a lot of branches on that tree. And there's another another one here. Going sort of there. Also his winter trees they've lost lost all their leaves so you get these nice shapes I was actually admiring some today looking at all the different shapes that you could see and then there's one that's sort of looked like this just use that liner brush quickly to do that Like that. A little bit of the uh, blue in the colour, a little bit of yellow and blue in the colour. There is actually some distant ones. I'm not sure if they'll be able to be seen that well. Yeah, there's a couple there. Uh, you can see a little bit of detail on some of these that are a bit further forward as well. So I can put a few of those in. Okay, something like that. Maybe one of these. Bit of a tree there. Now I'll uh, load my brush with some black and red. Black and red. I'll we'll stop putting this tree in that's here. It's right there.
I'll just use my liner to create the whole tree. Get a bit of control with it that way. I need to bring my uh, shadow a bit further down as well. Like Can smudge in some dark into that. And there it goes sort of around like this. Right, and then uh, the other branch sort of goes up like that. And then this can go further off like this. And that goes up like that. A lot of the times when I'm picking something to paint now, it's the colours. <laughs> it's the colours that I see. I like the colour. And uh, honestly, that wasn't always what I used to do. <laughs> Which is shocking, I know considering that's what you're using but I just started to get more and more into colours and the subject became the colour really there we go we've got that nice tree there and what I'm going to do is use this brush this is my old brush, my old watercolour Cotman uh, 668 or something like that. I'm going to uh, tap into this colour. It's just red and black. There's a bit of blue in there as well, actually. There's all sorts, really. <laughs> now I'm just going to tap into it. I'm just going to start putting some leaves on this tree. That's all I just... I can almost see that the uh, that they look like they've been tapped on by an artist. <laughs> it's kind of weird, is that? The actual uh, when you start looking at nature and it looks like a painter has done it. That's when you know you're picking the right subject. <laughs> That's looking quite nice. These autumn leaves. This is why this one looks so dramatic, really, because of the uh, all the leaves that are on this tree. quite a lot over this side because there's another tree there anyway something like that that again to get that light down here Let's 
scrub that in and then there's some of this green color and some along there some white color along here just use my finger just to pull it a little bit that little bit more detail to things there's a bit more light down here as well there we go that's a nice bit of light and there's a tree here so I'm paint that one in Is right there. It's got a few leaves, some of the branches on first. It's good to crack open the paints. I really have fun when I'm painting. I've not. I've had a bit of a cold type thing for the last few days, and I've not been able to paint. And uh, you realise how much you miss it <laughs> when you when you don't do it. I really miss that. Really makes me feel good when I'm painting. Just uh, dotting in some leaves. Don't need too many on that one. There is actually some yellow oak ones, so right around there. Some of the lights hitting it. Something different. And what do I need now? A little bit of green. There. Take that away there. I think we're looking pretty good actually. The only thing that I'm missing is what I need is a little bit of the uh, the red. And break it through there. There's a little bit of that uh, yellowy, a warm yellowy colour there. It's just breaking that bit. <laughs> Some white to go right in it. Just where the sun is just breaking through there. A little bit of dark bits around.
sort of breaking through here as well. So the sun is just behind. Something like that. Well, that shows it quite well. Some yellow ochre on this bit as well. Some colour on some of it. sort of stuff here <laughs> something like that that works out pretty nice actually that's pretty nice nice little scene now I can uh, decide if I want one area a bit brighter and have a bit more light going along here. Some yellow ochre and white and I can just go shoo. that extra bit of light and of course there's some light hitting that bit there and there and there's a bit getting there Something like that. Took out some nice lights. Little marks there as well, where the lights hitting, and that'll uh, just about do it. I think. Got a nice little scene there where the light is behind the tree and casting the shadow and I've got some nice colours in the background so I hope you enjoyed this one I hope it gave you uh, an idea on uh, creating some sunlight behind a tree and uh, hopefully I'll see you at another one cheers bye